Assalamu alaikum dear students uh, in this uh, video I am going to discuss an important topic that is uh, diagonalization uh, before uh, explaining diagonalization uh, I would like to discuss a definition uh, if A and B are square matrices we say that B is similar to A if there is an invertible matrix B such that B equals to P inverse AP okay we would say that B and A are similar if there exists a matrix P which is invertible such that P inverse AP equals to B. This is actually the definition of similar matrix. So by using the same concept uh, we say that a matrix is diagonalizable if a matrix A is similar to a matrix D which is itself a diagonal matrix okay so the formal definition is a square matrix a is said to be diagonalizable if it is similar to a diagonal matrix that is there exists an invertible matrix p such that p inverse p is diagonal in this case the matrix p is said to diagonalize a okay so Actually, we can reap a lot of benefits from diagonalization. When we say that B is similar to A, we actually mean that there are a lot of properties which are common in A and B. I mean, there are so many properties of A that would be exactly the properties of B if A and B are similar. And when we diagonalize a matrix A, then here uh, B would be replaced with a diagonal matrix that is D, uh, a diagonal matrix is a matrix whose diagonal entries are non-zero and rest of the entries are zero. So in that case, D would be much more simpler than A. And if we could find such a D, then obviously we can find the pr properties, all the properties of A that are similar to D uh, in, in a very easy manner. So uh, now I would discuss few theorems which are very useful for this process uh, one the theorem one is if a is an n cross n matrix the following statements are equivalent first statement is a is diagonalizable and the second statement is a has n linearly independent eigenvectors so uh, because this is a, a, an advanced topic so you must know a few basics about uh, eigenvalues eigenvectors and then you should know how to find basis for eigenspaces and all of these topics have already been discussed in my previous videos and if uh, somebody is not familiar with with these concepts uh, I would emphasize that he or she should watch the previous videos on uh, eigenvectors characteristic equation and basis for eigenspaces otherwise you would not be able to understand this topic so uh, actually this th theorem states that uh, Actually, uh, in the questions where we are uh, concerned about diagonalization process, we could uh, we could have been asked uh, about few things. First, they can ask uh, to diagonalize a matrix A uh, into a matrix D, and they would ask to find the matrix D. This is one task. Another task can be given that prove that or show that the matrix A is actually diagonalizable. In that case, we would find we, we would try to find a matrix P uh, that would make uh, this equation true. And uh, the third thing uh, that can be asked from us is that the, uh, we would be given with a matrix P inverse and a matrix A and matrix D, and we would have to show that uh, this equation uh, gets satisfied. So. Uh, I will discuss uh, these cases one by one. For that, there is another theorem. Uh, let me discuss this first. Uh, that is uh, theorem 2. If lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda k are distinct eigenvalues of a matrix A, and if v1, v2, vk are corresponding eigenvectors, 
then the set of v1 v2 up to vk is a linearly independent set and the second statement is an n cross n matrix with n distinct eigenvalues is diagonalizable okay so here we are just uh, learning few concepts that would help us to uh, understand the process of diagonalization here it says that if we have uh, an n cross n matrix and we have n distinct eigenvalues then the matrix a is definitely diagonalizable and uh, we can surely say that we can find a p uh, that would uh, satisfy the equation d equals to p inverse a p so in that case we don't have to worry about uh, the existence of p p would definitely exist we can find it by different means and if we have uh, like uh, lambda k's and then uh, corresponding to each lambda k we have a v uh, k then uh, all these matrices all these vectors would be a set of linearly independent set and in the last uh, in the first theorem we have already st studied that if uh, an n cross n matrix has n linearly independent eigenvectors then it is diagonalizable so if we say that if we have like four four eigenvectors and four eigenvalues and corresponding to each of them we have four eigenvectors then a matrix of order four cross four would be diagonalizable so uh, now let me explain the procedure for uh, diagonalizing a matrix uh, an n cross n matrix step one first uh, we will uh, determine whether or not a matrix is actually uh, diagonalizable i mean can we find a p uh, which, would, which would satisfy the equation so one way to do is is that we find basis for each eigenspace and count the total number of vectors obtained if there is a total of n vector then the matrix is diagonalizable and if the total is less than n the, then the matrix is not diagonalizable okay so in first step we will check uh, whether or not a matrix is diagonalizable if it is diagonalizable obviously we would try to work out the value of t and if it is not diagonalizable then we cannot find the value of p and we cannot find such a d that would satisfy d equals to p inverse a p so to do that we would calculate uh, eigenvalues then corresponding to each eigenvalue we would find basis for eigenspace and at the end we would count the number of vectors that appear in basis of eigenspaces suppose if we are dealing with a three cross three matrix and if there are three vectors uh, in basis of uh, eigenspaces then we would say that the matrix a is diagonalizable actually finding d is not a hard thing uh, we first have to uh, be sure that uh, uh, we can diagonalize it finding d is uh, a, a, an easy process and obviously you would know after uh, uh, this lecture that finding d is not itself a problem but uh, showing that there exists such a p that would be p inverse a equals to p equals to d is the actual problem so in first step uh, we have uh, made sure that there exists uh, a p uh, i mean that we have made sure that a is diagonalizable in the second step uh, we would try to find the matrix p itself okay so uh, in this case uh, if you have ascertained that uh, the matrix is diagonalizable then from the matrix p equals to p1 p2 pn whose column vectors are the n basis vectors you obtain in step one uh, actually in step one we have uh, counted the number of uh, vectors uh, p1 p2 up to pn that appear in uh, the basis for eigenspaces and then we tally it with the order of the matrix uh, that is n cross n 
if the number of matrices and number of columns or number of rows in matrix A are same, then we say that the matrix A is diagonalizable. Now in first step we have made that show that number of vectors in eigenspace, a basis of eigenspaces and order are same. So in the next step we would just arrange these uh, vectors P1, P2, P3 up to Pn in the forms of columns then it would give us the matrix P. And in third step P inverse a, P inverse AP will be a diagonal matrix whose successive diagonal entries are the eigenvalues lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda n that corresponds to successive columns of P. And that is what uh, I was trying to say that finding D is itself is not a difficult process. Uh, and D can be made by just the eigenvalues lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda n uh, arranged in uh, diagonal in a successive manner that would give us uh, the matrix D so now let me explain the whole process uh, with with, an, with the help of an example suppose uh, I have an example uh, and this example actually does finding a matrix P that diagonalizes a matrix A in this uh, I, I would try to find the matrix P that would diagonalize the matrix A and obviously at the end I would discuss how to write the matrix D itself suppose uh, we have a matrix P uh, whose entry uh, suppose we have a matrix A whose entries are written over here then uh, first of all we would find uh, eigenvalues and for eigenvalues we will have to find uh, characteristic equation and which can be found by this equation and the whole process is uh, already explained in my previous lectures so you can understand the process over there here, here I, I would just skip the details and, and I would focus on uh, the method itself suppose we have a characteristic equation then after simplifying this we would get lambda minus 1 lambda minus 2 square equals to 0 and from uh, their solution we would have two eigenvalues uh, that would be lambda equals to 1 and lambda equals to 2. Here we had three rows and three columns and number of uh, lambda i's are less than that but it does not mean that matrix is not diagonalizable. If uh, lambda i's would have been three and if they had been different then we would have been sure that uh, the matrix is diagonalizable and uh, now because uh, the lambda i's are less than uh, n so we need to calculate uh, the basis for eigenspaces and if we got if we got uh, two matrices at uh, two vectors over there then obviously that would not be equal to number of rows and number of columns and we would say that the matrix is not diagonalizable but if we got three uh, vectors in uh, basis uh, for eigenspaces then we would say that matrix is diagonalizable so we can find the following basis uh, for the eigenspaces and that process is also uh, already explained in previous lecture so I would just write down the answer for lambda equals to 2 we have two vectors in the basis for eigenspaces that is p1 is equals to minus 1 0 1 and p2 is 0 1 0 and corresponding to lambda equals to 1 we have one vector in basis for eigenspaces that is p3 equals to minus 2 1 1 so for both lambdas we have three vectors p1 p2 p3 which coincides with the number of columns or number of rows in our matrix a that is why uh, we can say that the matrix is diagonalizable and we can write P by arranging uh, the matrix P1, P2, P3 in the form of in the form of columns, and we would say that this matrix P would diagonalize the matrix A. Okay, and you can verify it yourself that P inverse AP would be a diagonal matrix, and that diagonal matrix can be calculated by arranging uh, just the uh, values of lambda. So we had lambda equals to 2, 2 and 1. So this is actually the matrix D and we have found the matrix P 
with the help of P1, P2 and P3 and this is our matrix A. So uh, this is how we can find a matrix P that diagonalizes a matrix A and then uh, by just putting the values of lambda i's in sequence we can get the value of d and here uh, the arrangement or uh, you can say the sequence of p i doesn't matter we can write p1 p2 p3 or we can write p2 p3 p1 it doesn't make any difference uh, all we have to do is uh, we will have to change the values over here that every value that is correspond that corresponds to a particular vector uh, would change uh, would get its value uh, on the diagonal uh, or it would get uh, its value changed on the diagonal suppose if we have a p3 uh, on the first place that corresponds to one then one would come over here and these two uh, uh, these two twos would shift uh, downwards so that is how we uh, find a matrix p and that is how we diagonalize a matrix a now there are matrices uh, which are not diagonalizable so uh, for that let me consider an example a that is 1 0 0 1 2 0 negative 3 5 2 and for this particular matrix uh, first of all uh, i would find a characteristic equation that is determinant of lambda i minus a and that uh, is this determinant and after opening this determinant by x row 1 I will I, I will get this e polynomial and after equating this polynomial equals to 0 uh, I would that is actually factorized form of that polynomial then uh, after equating it equal to 0 I would get characteristic equation and that characteristic equation would again give me uh, three roots one is repeated root that is two is repeated twice uh, and we have another root uh, that is one so there are two distinct roots uh, 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 for this equation that is two distinct eigenvalues and one eigenvalue gets repeated that is two now uh, now uh, as I, I, ha I have already explained the process in previous videos so we will leave it for you to know that basis for the eigenspaces are these uh, corresponding to lambda equals to 1 we have we would have p1 uh, which is this and again uh, for lambda equals to 2 we would have p2 which is equal to this here uh, in the basis of eigenspaces corresponding to each value of lambda i we have two vectors and order of matrix or 3 cross 3 so here number of vectors in eigenspaces are less than order that is 3 cross c therefore we would say that this particular matrix is not diagonalizable so if a matrix is not diagonalizable then the question of p finding the p or finding the d uh, would not arise so it doesn't make any sense in that case so you can practice these problems uh, exercise is actually 5.2 page is 3.311 and then the questions are from 5 to 8 and 11 to 14. In the next lecture, uh, inshallah, I'll discuss another topic that is orthonormal diagonalization. But before that, you need to have a strong grip uh, on this topic and also the previous topics that is eigenvalues, eigenvectors and basis for eigenspaces. Now, till the next lecture, Allah Hafiz.